What is your highest paid deal? Yeah, so my highest paid deal is $7,000. Um, so this was last year. I had worked with the company before, um, which it was another higher paying deal because of how many deliverables they asked okay. for. Um, it wasn't just like one reel or one yeah. video, like it was a lot of work. So fair enough. Um, they sent over 10 looks and they wanted me to do two feed posts for an ad. Um, and then they wanted eight, like 10 still images, I guess, from each item that they sent over. So basically eight extra UGC photos for them and okay. two ad posts. Okay. And so, yeah. And then I think they had usage for like 30 days. Oh, easy. so yeah. So that was my highest deal and it was a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of work. Yeah. But You're like, it was it worth it. But it was <laughs> yeah. worth it because I do like the company and you know, the quality of their clothes is so great. Mm -hmm. So I was happy about that. Um, but yeah, my favorite things are UGC to okay. be honest. Like, I think when you like the company, it makes a world of difference. I'll take lower rates for sure. Mm -hmm. If I want to work with that company um, or establish a relationship mm -hmm. with them, I'm like, sure. Free? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that was probably my favorite for just like one collab. Okay. So that was nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And huh. what about you? What's your highest deal? Um, so technically like flat rate, it was 17K, That's but with add-on, it was 20K. So since it's the same, it was the same campaign, mm -hmm. so 20K. Um, and what, it was one video, one TikTok, and then two sets of Instagram stories. And I think they were either two slides or three slides each, but... I thought that was a phenomenal deal. No, like, I mean, that's oh, amazing. Oh, I was dapping on my manager. I was like, girl, <laughs> absolutely. That's like, that was such a nice deal. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully it can only grow from there. Yeah, of but, course. Yeah. Especially with TikTok. Because we were talking about this before we started. Like, the reason why my deals on TikTok are so low is because it's just, like, not my kind of content. It's yeah. not what flourishes on TikTok. Like, people follow me because they like something that's pretty, not because they're, you know, watching for that reason. Like they're watching your life. Right. People don't know that much about me on TikTok other than just like the things I like. They don't know me. Yeah. Whereas on Instagram they do. Interesting. And that's I'm so what opposite. It I know. It's because I started so long ago. Yeah. Though. So that's fair enough. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's why like I get way more deals for that reason is because yeah. like the audience like actually feels like they have some sort of, you know, friendship with me which is really great so whereas on TikTok it's just like random people are mm -hmm. seeing it and it's I don't get the same response which is fine yes yeah. but you know it works style. for you yeah and that's it yeah yeah okay so that was our highest paid what's your lowest and why did you take it um I took it because it was my first paid deal and it was 250 mm -hmm. and I would do it again yeah because I love the brand that I work with that's and amazing. it did well and I was just starting out mm -hmm. so um like, of course, I'm going to be excited about $250. Yeah, of course. You know, and like my first paid deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what about yourself? So I don't remember on the early days, but it definitely was like probably a couple hundred the same. Mm -hmm. But I will say since I've been full time, mm -hmm. my lowest deal was $500. And I took it because I knew that they would probably pay more because I've had like I had friends that had worked with them and they did. So mm -hmm. every time I worked with them, since then they've added another 500 on okay that's nice so because they wanted to see my content whereas some companies will be like let's gift and then see how it goes yes they and never they back out yeah whereas <laughs> yeah. they still paid it was low for my rate but they still paid um and so i was like okay so they're actually willing to at least put something in they're right. not just trying to gift me something and then like never talk to me again right gift and so ghost. that is why i accepted it because i was like well i think that it will pan out in the end so totally yeah. Nice. How do you negotiate with brands? I don't. Me either. <laughs> like my manager. <laughs> I really just. But before, I probably okay, didn't do things well. that I want. Yeah. You know, like she'll send things over, and I'll be like, okay, can we work on this? If there's anything that we yeah. need to change, but. But it's never me actually doing the talking no. back and forth in the emails. So, but before, I think that I used to be very soft mm -hmm. because I didn't want to lose it, Same. especially because I was just starting out with actually getting paid then. And so I would probably not advocate for myself the way that I should have, um, which I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that have done this and like just started out. Mm -hmm. But now, even if I didn't have my agency, I would be 
probably just as solid as they are because yeah. I've been doing this and I understand the industry. But when you're first starting out, you're like, well, I don't want them to not pay me at all. So I guess I'll take that mm -hmm. because I won it and it's cool or like it's a company I really like. But you probably deserve more than you think you should, especially when you're first starting. Yeah. It's usually the rule. So. No, that happened one time I countered a company and it was like, that's a big company. Mm -hmm. I'm like, first of all, I know you have money. Yeah. Um, and it was like four hundred dollars. And then they just ghosted me and I kept reaching out. I was like, oh, OK, well, guess not then. But it was just the what they wanted was so much like they wanted to use uh, my media across all their platforms, all of that. And I'm like, yeah, for sure. If you pay me. And then they just didn't respond. And, of course, and I was like, I'll never work with they you always, again. They <laughs> then always they for gifting. ghost when, um, when your rate is too high or they didn't want to pay in the first place. And then Exa they no, just they, are like exactly. disappearing. Exactly. They're like, we can start at 150. And I'm like, okay, so 500. Okay, 400. You know? I appreciate brands that tell you, though, that your rate is out of their budget and that right now they can't afford it. Yeah. That's never I know really, who's lying. I never know. I, there's certain companies, like there's one that just happened last week and I had gotten gifting from them like three years ago, three, mm -hmm. four years ago. So I know the company and they are very kind and they're a smaller company, so it's fair. But my manager sent over my rate and they were like, we don't want to offend Nikki at all, um, but yeah. we have, like, we just can't afford that right now and we don't want to, you know, that's we don't nice. want that's it genuine. to look bad on her. Like, we just can't afford it. But in the future, we hope that we can. And I say, like, I really appreciate that. And that's the kind of brand that I would take a lower rate for because, because they do value you. They just, like, can't give you what you're asking for, yeah. but they appreciate it. So, yeah. Um, what's the number one thing you ask brands before a collab? Um, if I was still negotiating with them, it's, just of course, is it paid or is it gifted? Yes. If the they're not saying that, I'm like, all right, <laughs> one of the terms, one of the deals. First. And if if I want to work with the brand mm. and it's just gifted, I'm like, okay, you know, like maybe I will. Um, or if they're just, you know, hitting me with a low rate, I'm like, it's not worth it at that point. Mm -hmm. Especially if I'm not fully in love with the brand, I really want to work with them and establish a relationship. Yeah. Um, definitely that for me as well. Um, I do ask for location. Okay, that's now. so specific. This to is you. only because I have had brands go back and say that they are not happy with it okay. because of the location. Interesting. And so I've started doing that. Mm -hmm. I've started asking, like, hey, can you send over this of, or this or this mm -hmm. and see what they like? So that, that way I'm not going out of my way doing something and then knowing I could have done it in a way that they would have preferred, yeah. especially if I could have done it. Um, I'd rather do that. Also, I think it looks good on you um, because you're kind of giving them the option. And then that way they can't say anything. Right. If you give them like exactly what they you. wanted, they can't come back and say, we didn't want that. Yeah. So I ask that. I also ask um, iPhone or camera. Really? Mm -hmm. Because most of the time it's iPhone uh -huh. and I prefer that um, for ease um, and for editing because I have to edit a camera photo more than I will have to edit an iPhone photo. Totally. Um, and so I do ask that as oh, well. Oh, you don't mean for videos? No. You mean strictly for photos? Still image. You're, the way that you think about content is so <laughs> different. Like it's so interesting because we're in like the same field, mm -hmm. but very different. Different styles. Yeah. yeah. I ask for that too because sometimes like I've had friends, I've had me even be told like oh well we preferred we thought it was going to be camera or we thought it was going to be iphone and that's flash and it's like well you didn't say and so now i just am like what do you want yeah because like i don't want to have to redo this just because the light is different than you're expecting yeah i think that's also like plays into you being heavier on instagram mm -hmm. versus tiktok and yeah on tiktok versa. obviously i'm like yeah. whatever they're like do an unboxing like okay whatever yeah, 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 in front sure. of my window and yeah, yeah. do that in the living room but if it's for I, if it's for feed photos, mm -hmm. I'm like, what do you want? Like, I need you to tell me exactly if this is okay. I'm sending over my idea. Tell me whether you like it or not. If anything, mine's just size. Other than that, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I can't imagine they would ask me for a camera photo. But again, plays into our content. And yeah, what it depends we on do. the company. Yeah. yeah. Because if they want to use it for um, like e-commerce, so if they're if That's they want to use it as a photo on their website, mm -hmm. then they probably want it to be a camera. Yeah. You know, and so, or if they want it to go in their emails, they probably want it to be a, a camera. camera photo. Yeah. You just don't know exactly. And if they're paying for just like 30, 60, 90 days of usage, mm -hmm. they can use it on whatever. So I'm going to give them what they actually are paying for. So 
Do you diversify your income as a creator? And if so, how? Um, I've been trying to more lately. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it in a way that spreads myself too thin and yeah. then I'm just doing things. Again, just taking jobs just to take them. But I would say mainly through affiliate links, of course, mm -hmm. and then of course brand deals. And then I'm a stylist on an app called Index. Oh, um, cool. I'd say that's my main thing that I do. And I'll probably look into other just like avenues to make money, but right now I'm like very settled with what I have. That's amazing. What yeah. about you? I am the same, so affiliate links mm -hmm. um, and uh, brand clubs, obviously. I also mm -hmm. rent out almost all my dresses. Really? All of them. That because makes, I, I have, mean, it makes sense because you said ball so gowns. I, and not all of them are that. Like I have a lot of House of CB dresses okay. and like things that people want to use for one event, but they don't want to pay for it. Yeah. So like if they're a wedding guest or they have an, a party, mm -hmm. Christmas, something like Valentine's Day. So I rent out basically every dress that I have. Wow. Also my bags, like I do that as well. No one's ever rented bags because they are looking for clothes usually, but mm -hmm. my coats, like anything that I is still in stock mm -hmm. because if they do damage it or it gets lost, the company will pay for the cost of the item. So I can okay. rebuy it if something that was my goes question. crazy. Yeah. They also pay for the shipping. They pay for the dry cleaning. They, you know, if they rip it and I have to get it stitched, they pay for that. Mm -hmm. So kind of like a, there's no loss really, yeah. like, because you always can get it back. So because I have so many. That's I have suitcases smart. full of dresses. I have my clothes in our closet. I have them in the second room closet. I have them under the bed because we have one of those lifty beds. Yeah, you should maybe just start a dress brand. I mean, I don't know. but I... We kind of want to get into that. That's yeah. not much right now. But yeah, so I rent out mm -hmm. everything you, on by rotation or her. Okay, I was going to ask about by rotation. Yeah, yeah, so you can rent out anything over like 70 or 90. I don't remember which one, but it's under 100 pounds. Okay. Um, anything over that you can run things out. That's nice. So the second I get stuff, if I've shot in it and like, I don't need it, I'm like, all right, I do need it, but I don't want to get rid of it. Cause mm -hmm. I also don't want to get rid of things, but they're taking up space. Mm -hmm. So yeah, run to use. Look at that. Yeah, that's my main like other source. Yeah. That's wow. a good one.